guys. This is the second video in Unit 4. Here we're going to be talking about uh, signs that a chemical reaction has actually occurred. And this is just a clarification of chemical versus physical changes and really starting to apply again those same concepts of formulas and compounds and what they can do in a reaction. So again, here we're going to be focusing right um, there, just the signs of a chemical reaction. Now we just talked about what a chemical equation is and that's just how we're going to represent a chemical reaction. Now we have our reactants on the left, our products on the right, and it's we're going to read that the same way we read a sentence. Reactants react to produce the products. Hello, there we go. Now, there we go. Technically, there are five signs of a chemical reaction. You can have a color change, and I don't mean load for me. There we go. Now, I don't mean when you add a, gr a yellow solution and a blue solution and it turns green. That's just the way the world works. You have a yellow crown and you draw on top of it with a blue crown, it turns green. So what I'm talking about is a spontaneous color change that cannot be explained any other way. So for example, here we have colorless and pink that turns blue. That is not explainable by the laws of nature. You color on paper with a pink crown, it doesn't turn blue. That's not how it happens. And so you can even see here it's going to continue to have color changes happen. So when I say color change, I really mean a spontaneous change in color that is not explained in any other way besides a chemical reaction having occurred. Come on. <laughs> the second thing is gas evolving or a bubbling effect. Now same thing here. Oops, I went too far. This is not where you have a soda and you shake it up and the gas that is already dissolved is leaving. That is just something that is dissolved leaving the solution. It's the same where if um, your fish tank bubbler stops working, you might see some bubbles on the side of the tank. Well that's not a reaction that's happened, it's because it's got so much gas dissolved in there. Don't even start, Bear. Um, that it's coming out. Now what I mean by gas evolving is you mix two things together. This is um, really just uh, vinegar and baking soda. It's the same reaction they do for like all of the home science fair projects when you're like in middle school. They love to do it because it's really it's technically two safe compounds and you mix them together and you get a really good visual. Okay. So when I say gas evolving, I mean you have a solution and a powder, you put them together and voila, you have some bubbles. Now here you can see he's got the um, vinegar in the flask, he's dumping in some baking soda, and you get way more bubbling because this is a huge chemical reaction. It's producing, um, well, well, a ton here of CO2. And you can kind of see back here what the reaction is. Now, please don't try this at home, or if you do, make sure you Now, generally when we say precipitation, you kind of think of the weather channel where it's like, oh, it's going to rain, we're going to have some precipitation today. Well, that's liquid falling out of the air. When we say precipitation in chemistry, what we really mean is a solid falling out of liquid. It is the formation of an insoluble product. So here, for example, we have lead nitrate. And um, I think this is, I think this is KC, wait, hold on. Let's go ahead and hit pause. Potassium iodide. So this is potassium iodide. It's almost like uh, NaCl type solution. It's a salt solution. We're going to have lead nitrate. You add it in. And as soon as these two things get 
mix, you're going to see a little drop fall. You see that insoluble uh, product forming. It looks cloudy because whenever you have an insoluble mixed in, kind of like muddy water, it's just cloudy in appearance. It, it disrupts the, the, the light going through. Now, if you were to leave this alone for long enough, you can already see that the solid is falling to the bottom of that flask. Um, and so if you were to let it sit for a while, the lead iodide, the insoluble product, would be at the very bottom of this. Um, but it does take time. It's the same as if you mix up muddy water. It takes a little bit of time to get it right. Okay, so the fourth sign that a chemical reaction has taken place is a change in heat. Now, again, this does not mean you hold it in your hands and you warm it up with your hands and it feels warm or you throw it in the microwave or something like that. It is a spontaneous heat change when you mix two reactants together. And so uh, if you go on to take like nursing chemistry or Chem 111 or something, a lot of the time what you do is you test the heat by feeling the, the beaker or the bottom of like a, a well plate with the back of your hand. And it just, it may feel cold, it may feel hot, but either way, if there is a change in heat, it indicates that those reactants have changed form somehow and a reaction has occurred. Now, we use these all the time because we can get ice packs and hot packs from the pharmacy, over the counter, um, all kinds of things. And what you do is for like these, um, uh oh. I, I hope I didn't click on something. Um, for the ice packs in general, um, I don't want to click on it again. Happens is you end up getting uh, powder or yeah, I don't want to open it. You you have a I'm gonna draw it like this since I can't draw on top. Uh, it's not letting me. I don't want to click on it again. So you have a, a pack on the inside that's got some kind of powder or substance. Then you've got another solute, solvent, reactant, we're just going to say reactant here. And when you do is you twist it, you, you push on it, and somehow you break this pack so that they mix. And when they mix the, mix, the temperature changes. And so you can get a really good ice pack or a hot pack depending on what the chemicals themselves are. Okay. Now I think I might, nope, I forgot to uh, include it here. The last thing is a change in pH. Now a change of pH just is when you have something that was very acidic and then it's not. Think about, you know, if you have a acid reflux, you might take an antacid. That's going to react with the acid in your stomach to make it more neutral. And so we'll talk about this a little bit more in a, uh, in a bit. But those are the five signs of a chemical reaction.